What's up, everybody? Gate 7 International is back. Olympiacos had the early game today, an early game, an early thrashing of newly promoted Kifisia. It's always a good day when you have a lovely 4 nothing demolition at home. Costa is joining me today. Costa, how are you doing today, buddy? Hi, Ari. Hi, everyone. As you said, good for, um, good for the morale, for the confidence boost today good thrashing good whipping spanking whatever you want to call it Gifisia, um team that has some links to AEK so extra fun I enjoyed it as did I as did I and before we get going on with some of the post-match coverage guys don't forget to like and subscribe Every engagement, whether you any like, any comments, anything you do during the channel, helps us find more and more red and white fans. We find more every day. On Instagram, we just hit 6,000 followers, so thank you guys all for the support. The community continues to grow. We love it, and we love continuing to grow and make this the biggest that it can be, the best place for Greek football. And don't forget, guys, you can support us on Patreon as well. For just a dollar a month, you can join our WhatsApp group. You get a shout-out and a follow on social media. You can get a little bit of insight into our conversations, our thought processes. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, fun discussions on Patreon. Uh, we also send some information there. Not everything that we put on social media um, some stuff just goes there, anything that we don't want to advertise. And then, of course, guys, uh, there's also the enhanced analyses, uh, and you also get some special interviews as well if you're part of the expanded content tier. We did an interview with the Argentinian ex-president of Huracan, and we have more fun interviews outside of the realm of Olympiacos coming up. So check that out if you want more content from us. And without further ado, we're just going to jump right into it and talk about this match. Um, there were a lot of changes in the lineup for today's match. We saw the likes of Solbakin. Ola Solbakin got a run today. We saw uh, Ndoy being partnered with uh, Retsos. Alexandropoulos got a run. Podence got the start. And El Kabi, surprisingly for me at least, got a start today. I thought maybe we would try giving Jovetic at least a start. But, you know, some different, some different looks. Kini was on the right as well playing right back and overall things were at least early on were a little bit sketchy for me uh, we had a couple of scary counters and doy did not do in my opinion what needed to be done if he was going to try and take the position for himself he looked very very sketchy over committing once again as we know he can do over committing in some of these situations um we got to see a little bit of Parozo later in the second half as well. But um, the the defense does not leave much to be, I'll say, desired. Retos, I thought, performed very well. It was nice to see the crowd giving him a bit of an ovation and some applause for his performance. Also following some of the very unnecessary and uncalled for hate that he was getting, abuse he was getting on social media. Uh, I went to war with more than a few idiots over that. Um, people that I thought shouldn't be making those uh, those kinds of comments for for somebody who's been our best center back all season. But I'll digress with that. Uh, Costa, what were your thoughts on the match today? Yeah, I think I'll start with this comment from Yorgos Murzanos. Pretty much. Uh, I, I agree with this. It says, good evening, guys. It's like a pattern this season in the league. Start bad. Pascal Lagis uh, has to work, and then we demolish them. I think it's been the case yeah. against Panseraikos. It's been the case against Atromitos early on. Some dangerous counterattacks where we're open, and uh, and Pascal Lagis has had to had to save us. Um, so yeah, I agree with that from from Yorgos, as you said as well. A lot of a lot of changes in in the lineup. I was pretty certain that we would see at least those three behind the striker: Scarpa, Podence, and Solbakin. I was pretty sure about that. Um, I guess in midfield there was a bit of a question mark. I I didn't expect, for example, that he'd fully rotate the two centre mids, or at least we well we knew Hesse was going to be out, and Madi Kamara ended up starting. 
uh, with Alexandropoulos next to him. Ibora coming on for for Madi uh, later on in the game, so he could get a rest too. And then, um, and like you said, I think since he didn't go for Perozo Doi, for example, he chose to stick with uh, Retos at the back, continue playing him. You know, he 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 could have made more changes, but he still he still needed to keep those pieces that he's been playing with since since his arrival. Uh, doesn't want to disrupt the chemistry of the team too much. Um, he needs to keep that balance between chemistry of the um, the team that he's built so far and adding those new pieces in. So I thought I thought the balance overall was pretty good in how he set the team up. Uh, looking at everyone at the back, I think it was important for Ortega to to get a game, a full ninety minutes down the left hand side. It was pretty good. I mean, he's got an assist on the night. Really nice cross into the box. A nice link up play with with Sol Bakken on on the left. So I think that's important. But um, but yeah, a lot of people are worried about the defense. We've been talking about that. Um, I feel for for a long time and I hope we're not talking about it too much throughout the course of the season but you saw it today um the one-on-one -on -one save that Pascal Lagis has made I think in the eighth minute Doi overcommits in midfield and then the guy just darts through plays plays a pass in and I think Alexandropoulos is really scrambling to get back as well. And he throws his foot out. And, you know, luckily, Pascal Lagis makes a good save. Veretos puts some pressure. Uh, but that looked really dangerous. Um, and it's not the first time we see it. And it's really down that left-hand side of ours. So Ortega's caught a little bit further up the pitch than he should be. Doi's overcommitted and we're completely exposed. Uh, and it's not a coincidence, actually. If you, I think if you look back at all of the plays where we've looked really weak in transition it's breaking down that left hand side of ours when Ortega and Doi have been playing as much as we you know we've talked about Freire and his misgivings uh I think I, I hate to say it but Freire and Retos is probably the best centre-back pairing that we have right now and I'm you know until I'm convinced otherwise I think it was a missed opportunity opportunity for for doi today besides his distribution in in you know defense overall just yeah he didn't take the opportunity by the scruff of the neck today some other players did and we'll we'll get into that as the show goes on absolutely uh the and you know the the center back issues if today is any indication it's not, I mean, in the winter, if things continue like this, we have to get a center back. We're going to have to get something that's a little bit more proven because we can't go through the season like this. You can't go through with just, you have one guy that is day in, day out, pretty consistent, and then just rotating through three others that you don't know what you're going to get on a given day. Freire, who is, uh, Freire, rather, who is, yes, uh, left-footed and been pretty decent in the air, all things considered since he's gotten here, but just has these stupid, stupid, stupid mistakes. And you don't know when they're going to come out. And then you have Ndoy, who you think, okay, very aggressive, young guy, academy guy. Maybe we can rely on him instead. And then here we go. We're coming up against Gifisial, newly promoted team, not the best competition. And you expect him to do better, right? And the, there was an alarming statistic for, for Ndoy, and this was something that I was a little bit nervous of before the stat line came out. He only won one of his duels on the ground. He got dribbled past four times during the game today. One for six in his, in his ground duels. He got beat almost every time somebody dribbled against him. And... Lambro had brought this up in our group chat. Like he, when, when he's going into the ball, he gets way too close. Um, kind of like sticks his foot in too easily. Isn't very smart. And he overcommits very easily. and can get beat on that. He just kind of takes for granted his physicality and, and his speed and thinks that he can get back easily enough. And that's not, unfortunately, uh, you have to be smarter than that. In, in, in my opinion, 
I see a lot of similarities between him and, and Freire. The only difference is Freire is older and, of course, left-footed, obviously. But they're both very aggressive in that manner. Now, Ndoy, I don't think, is going to pass the ball to the other team in, in that respect. But he makes some more tactical errors, awareness errors, we'll say, in, in that center back area, which is which then leads you to believe, okay, all right, Freire is not the option or not the answer to partner with Doi or with uh, Retzos. But is Doi? No. When he's playing like this, you can't rely on him. And then we saw Borozo come in in the second half. And okay, it's the end of the game, you know, or, or towards the end of the game in the second half. What are you really going to see Borozo start? But I'll be honest with you, I wasn't 100% convinced in the time that he had on the field either. That's not fair to say. I know because you didn't see much see much of him, but uh, it's it's not a good situation. Um, and I will, I want to bring up also with regards to, to Retzos as well. You saw again, the ball playing ability on display today. He had the gorgeous ball that he played in to Podense when he drew the penalty. I mean, it was, a, it was a lovely ball. What other center back do we have, or have we had in the last season and a half, two seasons that could do something like that besides Semedo? None. So I'll reiterate that I'm glad he got the support from the fans um, in the stadium because I think he deserved it. And he's really the only good thing we have to speak of, consistent good thing that we have to speak of in that center back position. And it's 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 not good. You really hope that against Kifisia, we would have seen, okay, this is what we've got here. Uh, maybe our maybe our back line is, is pretty good. It's just it, it got a little bit exposed in Europe. But no, all you saw today was despite a 4 nothing pounding that – this could very easily, we could very easily have copped a couple goals. And this could have been a little bit more of a cagey situation in the game today. That's that that is my point when I'm talking about this. The 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 center back pairing today did nothing to assuage my fears of the fact that we don't have a, a day in, day out duo that we can rely on. We have Retzos and then whoever we think is going to do well that day. Yeah, maybe I want to say a few words on Aretos as well, because first of all, I understand that Greeks as a mentality, as a culture, particularly the Greeks that live in Greece, there is this mentality of, you know, we we get super happy about something and we get super sad or super depressed. There's and kind of no balance in between. And, and maybe I'm, you know, I'm... I'm blowing this a bit out of proportion. That's what you do when you stereotype. But there's some truth to that when you when you look at the Retzos situation and, and not only. We need to remember a little bit like this kid's story. He's, what, 24 now? He yeah. left at a very young age, big transfer fee. Um, he was given captain's armbands by Paolo Bento the season before Besnik Hassi, before he was transferred out. So already, like, this this was a kid, 18 years old, who was given responsibility early on. Um, he left. He had a horrible injury in Leverkusen. And then, you know, came back after a season, got loaned out to Sheffield United that was playing in the Premier League at the time. Then, you know, that move basically got shot down by COVID. So he never played, never really played for Sheffield United. Uh, back to Leverkusen, then out to Italy. Can't even remember where. Ended up at Elas Verona. And then he's come back to us. And the reality is, is that actually this kid should never have ended up coming back to play for us. He came back on the loan. We activated the loan. We all know what happened last season. And I just wanted to bring that all up to remind people of, you know, the places that this lad's been. And he's only 24. 25. And I think that a, a lot of people are asking the question this season, is like, what did he do different? What did he do different with his body? I heard that he commented on this the other day. It's like, no, I didn't do anything different. It's just he has the consistent game time. He finally had a full preseason under his belt without getting injured. 
he built confidence. And frankly, again, listening to what I've just told you, this kid must have grown some thick skin over the last few years. And I don't think it's by chance that he's given this leadership responsibility at the club. He captained the team today. And I know it's only against Gifisia today, but he looked like the captain on the field. I won't preclude who my man of the match is, but he was, you know, it's not just the pass he played over the top for Podence. You know, he's read the run and he's played it into him perfectly. The amount of times that we saw him play play those those balls through the midfield yep. into the attack, some some lovely balls forwards, um, mainly again linking up with with Podence, linking up with El Kabi, those passes into the final third, fantastic. Um, and when he came off and Perozo came on, you saw that. You, 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 a big part of our build-up is gone. Perosa can only play a lateral ball out wide, Correct. step back, receive, play it across. You can't play those balls between the lines like Gretos can. And there are very few players in this squad that can. Doi, one of them, perhaps. But nobody can do what, what Retos does for us. Um, we all want to see him step up. Um Yes, he got ahead of himself when he stepped on Doan in the game against Freiburg. But you know, people that are people that are involved, people that they make mistakes. So yeah. crucifying him for a mistake that he made against Freiburg and shitting on him and going into his comments and writing horrible things. What do people expect? What do people expect that to do to a person, like a human being? He's a human being, first and foremost, then a football player, which is his right. profession. Okay? Like, my point is, stop shitting on him and get behind him. He's a kid that's taken up a leadership role in the club. He was born and raised inside the club. So if this is how we treat our own, then you know some people really need to look in the mirror, take a step back, chill the f out, and just think. Okay, and let's let's support our boys, particularly the players like this that come out of the club. Exactly. Well, and and that's exactly the point right there, Costa. What really irritated me, and I went to war over this on social media. I went back and forth with a bunch of mutants that are sitting there that. I am ashamed to call fellow fans of this club for the way that they were acting and and what what they what they had made comments on his social media for. Unbelievable. Those same individuals going at at Retos for everything and is bringing everybody into the picture, him, his family, whatever, bringing him into it. But funny enough, not a single one of them made a comment about the person who's been responsible for half of the goals that we've conceded this season so far. And it, it it just goes back to an issue we've talked about before where not just – this doesn't just happen at Libyakos, but in Greece in general, a lot of fans are – it's a lot easier for them. They're a lot more likely to criticize Greek players than, than foreign players. Greek players would get a lot more criticism in some respects than foreign players. And Retsos – because he's Greek, maybe he receives that. But you're right. He's he's not just Greek. He's an Olympiakos Academy product. We need to support him. He has had one bad game. Sorry, I don't, I'm not even going to say it was a bad game, Costa, because he made one, mis one big mistake in that game. The rest of the game wasn't that bad. The rest of the game was pretty good. I'll say he had an average game. He had one average game. And people wanted to come to me and say, no, no, he's the worst. We He's, he's sitting... He's sitting next to he's sitting next to Cannavaro and he can't play well. The next person I hear call Freire Cannavaro or some bullshit like that, I'm gonna flip out again. It's ridiculous. Retos is responsible for one goal out of six we've at six that we've con conceded so far this season. Freire is responsible for three of them. People seem to forget that he gave up a penalty against Gank. Remember that? Do you guys remember the penalty that he gave up against Gank? These individuals, 
It's 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 ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous, and it's unacceptable. The 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 guy has been fantastic for us this season, and it's a miracle he has been able to play as long as he has without getting health or without getting hurt. It's a miracle. You should be happy about this, not upset. It's one thing to say the situation at center back is bad. And I could understand if you're saying, well, look, if Retzos is our key center back, that's a problem. There's a problem with quality there. I might entertain that argument. Fine. But but to act like he's the pro- he is the problem with the center back is far from the problem. If Retzos hasn't been playing like he's been playing, if he hasn't been in the form that he's in now, can you imagine the state we'd be in? Imagine if Retzos was back to playing kind of how he ended last season, how things were, or he gets hurt, and we're stuck with Freire and Porozo in the center back, or Freire and Doy. How many goals do you think we would have conceded? We would have been embarrassed by Freiburg. We probably could have lost the game today. It's unbelievable. And it's it's absolutely ridiculous. And on that note, Costa, unless unless you uh, have more you want to say on that subject, there is a no, there is a, let's a talk bright about spot more I'd positive like to discuss. Thing. Well, there is yeah, a very positive yeah. thing, and that is the the legend. Well, maybe too much to call him a legend at this point, but Daniel Podenza I thought had an amazing game, uh, incredible game. I mean, he really kind of just since he's come back has been taking off, just kind of continuing almost where he started today, drawing a penalty. Then he gets a header, his second of his career. Love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, I thought he looked great today, and I thought he's looked pretty good since he's come back. Um, uh, so happy that we that we have have that production. the The best progressive threat that existed in Greece when he was here last time. One of the best, uh, I believe. You had showed that Gosta, or you had put it out on um, on social media in England. One of the best progressive threats in England as well. And you can see Henry that here. Kane. Carries the that was it. Yes. Carries the ball very well. Um, and he just kind of is a, he's assimilated back so quickly. Love it. I absolutely love it. I have big expectations from Podence, to be honest with you. Um, I'm very glad for him that he's involved in both goals today. I said it, I think, on the last show, one before that with him, um, I'd like to see more consistency throughout the 90. I want him. I want him really to be involved heavily. Um, I think today was good. Again, another game for him to up his match fitness, his confidence. Important to get a goal. Uh, really good header, by the way. Uh, like a centre forwards header. He's knocked it down onto the ground. The keeper can't do anything. So I'm happy for him. Um, but I want to see. I want to see more. And I, you know, I think what I said a few. A few shows ago was that he has these um f- crap in greek it's called nekradiastimata they're just like parts of the game where you don't know if he's on the pitch yeah. like 10 15 20 minutes he hasn't touched the ball and you're like come on mate get involved um but but okay um i think we we know more or less what to expect from Podence. it's the other the other player today that we saw for the first time the norwegian but before we get to that um opportunity now to say again guys if you haven't hit the like button if you haven't subscribed already um you can do that right now it doesn't cost you anything uh the more likes we get the more uh, engagements that uh that helps get the channel discovered it helps grow the community bring more olibiagos fans to gate seven international your number one english source for all things olibiagos and there are some comments i want to address as well um from yorgos asking about um Biancon, uh, Biancon, uh, it was said on the radio that he might be playing for B team to get some uh, to get some playing time. He wasn't in the squad that played against. Um, I think it was Irodotos. I could be wrong. Uh, they had a, they had their first game yesterday. He wasn't on the bench. Um, only Andrutos, incidentally, was from the from the first team um we didn't see omar richards wasn't in the squad yesterday and neither was ivan birnich who wasn't in the squad today uh, against uh, against gifisia and there was some other comments as well we'll guys we'll talk about scarpa we'll talk about Solbakken. we've seen that there are 
quite a few comments. Um, another one: Can he bother play centre back? I don't. I don't believe he's ever played centre back in his career. Who? Bianconé or Ibora? No, Ibora. Oh, Ibora. Ibora. No, he hasn't. I don't think he's ever played there. Um, okay. When is Richards going to be fit? Good question. So here's Good the question. here's the thing with Richards, guys. Remember, he had the injuries. He had the really bad injuries. And then he also ended up getting a hernia late last season. And that from, again, from what I've been told, he I mean, but Richards is training fully. There's one thing, but here's the second thing with hernias. You have to be careful depending on the type of hernia it is. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not a doctor. I've just spoken to doctors that my wife works with that hernias and things like that. And it's not always a situation that like can go away right, right away. It has to be managed. So we don't know how that's playing out, but if he's training fully with the team, that's a good sign. But the Bianconé and or Bianco and sorry and Richards were both players that I told you guys don't expect anything from them for a few months until they're fully rehabbed. But hopefully, we we know Bianco can play center back, so there's an option, just not in the Euro list. Let's and, talk uh, about my Norwegian friend. Oh yeah, absolutely. I got to tell you, even though t if, if we look probably at at the stats that are going to come out on Y Scout. If you look at the stats, they're probably not going to be overly impressive as far as end product is concerned. But I got to tell you, I love the runs. I love how he how he went through some defenders. I love how he imposes himself. All really things I was – just a different look. A different look than what we've seen so far. I, I have to say that it's not a player that I've watched play um and only the tape only a bit of a, a bit of scouting on on y scout and any videos that were crawling around on youtube so I, I don't i didn't know the player very well i knew his name and that he's a but a glimpse product from norway because i work for a norwegian company there are some some things i know about the norwegian system and these guys they start being you know they're their pathway to becoming professionals starts very early on. So they have special schools, like athletic schools, that uh, you know parents can put their kids into these schools from, I think, 12, 12 and up. And they start picking and choosing sports, like they do athletics, they play football as well. Um, and they teach them the fundamentals very early. Uh, and my point is you can you could see that. You could see that um, on the pitch today, whether it was a long ball that he played over the top to El Carbi, uh, you know, it was a, a perfect long ball just in front of the attacker so that he could run onto it, or the the interplay with Ortega for the for the second goal down the wing, and then of course like his physical traits, like his his build, his stature, his um, his presence, his ability to just outmuscle his opponents get into good positions um the run the run for the the one-on-one -on -one that he had which by the way was a good save too from um from christensen i thought maybe he could try and go around the keeper but he tried to toe poke it with his left foot and christensen's got a leg out um and i watched his i watched his post-match interview as well and and again i <laughs> i work with scandinavians a lot and Norwegians in particular, and I could, you can tell even if you don't know them that he was very annoyed at the miss. He was annoyed with himself. Um, but uh, no, I'm very excited about this player. I'm very excited about this player. I think he he can take up Masuras's role okay. in the team. And uh, I think I even I even mentioned on on the last the last show after the Freiburg game that moving forward, going you know deeper into the season, I think Fortunis, Podence, Solbakin is really what we may well be seeing if everyone's fit and at the top of their game. I think those three are the ones. And there have been some questions going in the chat like what what optimistic like what positives do we take 
out of this game like moving forward and you know some things have been mentioned like these this is the kind of game that we might drop points last season and we're not yep. dropping points where we're, we're banging these opponents for nil and sending them back home another thing guys we haven't seen fortunis play with podence and so in yet if we think theoretically that those three are the best attacking options behind the striker, we haven't seen it yet. So that's that's something to look forward to. I'm telling you, those three together. And I don't know if you noticed today, Ari, as well, the formation, like the three behind the striker, it wasn't switching all the time. No. Like in other games, it was no. quite... Like, Podenza played as a right winger all the first half. And so Bakken played left inside a little bit. And, and, and Scarpa was really playing that central role, maybe drifting out to the right sometimes to cut in on his left. So it was quite fixed as yeah. opposed to other games where, like, you don't know where Masuras is playing or for they're all moving around. It was quite, it was quite fixed today. Um, so... So yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing that trio later on in the season. For sure, for sure. I really, I mean, if nothing else, I I really want to see Ole Solbach and start. You know, today he got his start. Maybe it's too much to ask to see him also play in the midweek against Adis. But you know, you, you already brought up all of the great things that he did. And I just see him as a, a better, like he's a better Masuras. He can make those same types of inside runs that Masuras makes, but he can also do the thing we all hate that Masuras cannot do, which is he can't take on defenders. And and Solbakin, he can do it and he imposes himself. He's a big boy. He's 6'1", uh, uh, 186, 187 centimeters. He's a big boy. And, and he's pretty. he's pretty spry. He's pretty quick. You know, I mean, like sometimes when you see some of these like taller players, they're they're they don't have as much in their step. You know what I mean? They're a little slower. He's not slow. I um, yeah, I, I'm with you there. I hope uh, I hope I hope we see more of him because he <laughs> he looks he looked even though there was no end product. Right. Even though no end product to speak of on paper, the the runs were great. The The moves were nice and a lot more positive than negative coming from that. So I'm, I'm with you. I hope we see that. Woo. Can I ask you like a, a question? Cause like there's this, I, I've seen this from Lagis and some other people, this negativity that you can't play in Europe with this kind of attacking formation. And we should have played with three in midfield. Uh, we should have packed the midfield, etc. Did you see in the Freiburg game, did you see defensive breakdowns no. like the ones we saw today? No. The goals we I, ate, yeah. the goals we ate were from the penalty giveaway, the shitty pass back, and the, and the set piece where there's yeah. 11, 11 Olympiacos players in the frigging box defending and no one's picked up Philip. Or Kinney stepped off him, but has I haven't like I swear I can't really remember against Freiburg with the attacking formation that we put out a defensive breakdown where I've no, said I don't they've either. you know they've played the ball around us like like magic and just cut through us like a knife through butter. I'm sorry, but like, I I I don't I don't get it. What when Valverde was playing full press? For 60 minutes against Dortmund and and Marseille and whoever was coming to Garay Skagin, we sent them packing. What we we couldn't play attacking. No, you're you're I right. I don't understand. I, I I'm sorry, like I don't understand this negativity. Like we're gonna be the Calosta Triami then of Europe if we play attacking formation forward. I I don't know. I, I I agree with you there. I didn't see. I was not intimidated by Freiburg in that game almost ever. I was intimidated by our own mistakes. So no, I think I I I'm not I'm not there with that comment. It's at least against uh, uh, they could get in front of our box. Particularly in the first twenty five minutes, 
before Hesse has gone off, the amount of times that we've managed to make them make mistakes or play long balls over the top and recuperate possession. So I'm sorry, but as long as we're doing that, now it was yet to be seen like what the fitness levels are. But but honestly, I like that the manager didn't he didn't compromise on his principles. This is the way yeah. he's played. This is the way he's training the team to play. And he's not going to say all of a sudden, mm, do you know what? I'm going to put Ibora in or whoever and play three in the middle because I'm scared and I'm going to sit back and I'm going to try and play Banathanai Goss counter-attacking football in Europe. And that's, don't mean to bring them into it, but that's not, that's not what I want to see from my club. Right. No, I'm 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 with you here. There's a there's also a comment here from Look at My Eyes DC. Freiburg's defense made the same mistakes and we missed every single opportunity. The difference is we had a press. Freiburg didn't. You know what our press was at against Freiburg, especially in the first 25 minutes, first 15 minutes? Here, I'll pull it up for you. But that's the difference. We had a we had a concerted press. Freiburg did not. That gift we gave Freiburg was in spite of ourselves, not because of anything that that Freiburg did to us, the the mistakes that we caused against Freiburg were because of our relentless pressing. There's a reason for that, and it's important that we recognize that because this isn't um, this this is a completely different proposition than last year, where where we play against Freiburg and we would park the bus or mid block at best. No, not not in this scenario. This scenario, this was those mistakes that Freiburg made were because of our pressing pattern. And last year, I would have told you the opposite. But if we're looking early on at our press, let's hear. Let's have a look. Get it up here first. Do you know Freiburg. what our PPDA was against Freiburg? Well, that's what I'm pulling up. Um, oh my god, I can't get Y Scout to load. Sorry, but I'll pull it up. And when I get it up there, I'll, I'll pull it up there. But look, like I'm looking at. Um, fr so Freiburg, Freiburg's press. This is in the 31st, 13.4. That's from Freiburg. Um, now, our press really let up as the game went on, unfortunately. But uh, for some reason, I can only see the middle, the 31 to 45th, where we we had 6.1. Our press was 6.1 PPDA versus theirs was 13. Um, and that's just that's what, where I had six? it. 6.1 from the 31st to the 45th minute. But I can't. I don't know. It must be, um, it's not letting wow. me like it keeps, this is what I was looking at before and I'm stuck there and why scouts not loading. So maybe if I can get it to refresh in a couple of minutes, but like, think about that. That's intense. 30, 31st of the 45th minute, our PPDA was 6.1 passes allowed per defensive action. Freiburg's was that's 13. After Hess has gone off. Right. And that's after Hess has gone off. Exactly. Wow. So wow. it's, it, that's, that is my, that is, that, that's my thing at least. So it's the, the fact that we were causing those mistakes because we were the ones that were making the press. We were the ones doing, initiating that, that action. You know what I mean? That's, I don't know. It, it's different for me in that respect. Uh, TF91, we haven't talked about Scarpa yet. It's a good we time to talk about him. Let's talk about him. Yeah. Before we do that, um, another... Outlying issue. Kiano says we need to see more from Brunich. I don't know why he isn't playing even as a substitute. Mate, there's no space. Yeah. There's no space. Um, I have to tell you that I'm I'm a little bit upset about this, but, but again, we all are. What do you do? Like, what do you do when you've got the opportunity to bring back Pedence? And the thing play. is, does Pedenza stay at the end of the season? We'll see. We'll see, um, because the info about the option isn't really transparent enough for me to believe that Superman is back for good. Um, I was disappointed that Brinich wasn't on the bench today, but I have a feeling that at best we're going to see Brinich in cup games this season. Yeah. Because, again, like if he puts him in today then he's doing that um he, he's you know he's uh he's at the expense he's doing it at the expense of gelling the team further 
Right. Because he absolutely has to bring in these other players, but then uh but then say so back in Jovetic, like he has to start integrating them into the team. And if he chose to bring in Brinich today, then you know, it is what it is. I th- I was thinking about this earlier today. I think he's gonna be a cup player at best. I don't think it's great for his development. There might be a discussion come December, January about loaning him. Uh, that, that kid needs to play. That kid needs yeah. to play. I don't think a year at Olympiacos training with the team is good for his development. Uh, I'm I'm with you. I'm with you. It's it's definitely a disappointing situation, but at the same time, it's you know it's a um, there's just too many mouths to feed in, in that respect. Uh, and we'll see. Hopefully, he gets more time. But you're, you're. I, I agree with you 100. percent The Podence move killed any chance of him seeing regular minutes. But going back to the comment from TF91 about Scarpa and asking about Scarpa, if you saw the, if you watched the deep dive, if you watched the scouting report, I made it very clear about the context of his success in at at Palmeiras, and I told you guys he's not like. This isn't like a Robinho, Ronaldinho. He's going to dribble through like three, four people and do stuff. That's not the type of player this guy is. If you look at all some of the greatest plays that he had for for Palmeiras in stride or when when the team was moving, he it, a lot of it were these brilliant one touch, quick moving long balls that he played. He's not even looking where his teammate is. He knows he's there. Gorgeous balls that were played, and my concern at the end of the scouting report was that transitioning that type of player into Olympiacos would take a long time because he has to develop that understanding. You're not going to see somebody be able to make these gorgeous plays while the team's moving and in transition. If he doesn't know his teammates, he's not comfortable, doesn't know where they're going to be. That type of player is a completely different type of player to build around. And he has a great shot. You see him. You see him rip some pretty strong shots, and I, 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 if I feel like he's he himself as a player is frustrated, uh, maybe with how he's performing, the fact that he's not living up to maybe expectation. And the reason I say that is because all the tape I watched hours of footage on him, and I saw him make use of the ball in situations in the final third and in the penalty area a lot more efficiently in Brazil than he did here. A lot he you know a lot more selfish he has been since he's been here like taking shots ripping shots versus playing people that are more wide open I didn't see that as much there in Brazil so it makes me wonder I don't know it makes me wonder if maybe that frustration is getting to him all in all I expected a difficult transition or maybe a longer transition for Scarpa here but I did expect a little bit better than what I'm seeing I'll say that much he's going to need time and if the rumors are true we don't have patience for it but he's already a type of player that there, there's an understanding required, a level of understanding with the team for him to be at his best. And he's got to be playing pretty deep. No, I don't want to say pretty deep, but in that more central attacking midfield role, not necessarily on as a winger. That's that's how I saw it. And unfortunately, that's kind of what we're seeing. You yeah, know, I agree with that. I think... In some games, he's been brought on and he's started his attacks out on the left, where his positioning's been out on the left. Um, and it hasn't worked. I think for it to work, like you said, he has to start in those central positions, um, operating outside the outside the 18-yard box, um, sometimes out on the right, getting onto his left foot. We saw him do that today a few times. He ripped a shot that, you know... <clears throat> One thing I noticed today really was that he was um he was really forcing it today. So like he was in, in a position where he was really forcing it and it's like, okay, I'm gonna shoot, even when there are players around him that are clearly in better positions. And and yes, it's easy for us to say we look at a replay and we look where the other players are and think, oh come on, you know, there are two other players open. There was one cross that came in over the top and he tried to volley it first time and it went wide and you know so Buckingham was waiting on the penalty spot 
and he had a clear shot in front of him. There was another one where he received the ball outside the box, and I think Podenza was open a few steps to the right, like in front of goal. So all he needed to do was play a, you know, like a fake shot and play him in, and that was probably a goal. But you know, I think this is a player that, like you said, he's he's frustrated. He wants to prove himself. He feels like he's got something to prove. He came over to Europe from Palmeiras. He did nothing at Forest. Um, the the brand of football, the type of football they played at Forest, doesn't suit him at all. And you'd think because they're a counter-attacking team, and you'd think actually that Olympiacos, a team that is possession dominant, plays attacking football um, on the front foot, that we could see something from him. And maybe we still might, but for the moment, it, you know, he just looks really desperate to me. He looks desperate to me, and you know, I hope he breaks that duck, as uh, as Costas Glasnos likes to say. Yeah, but I I do think like clearly he has quality. Clearly, he has something to offer. He's involved in the f- third goal for Jovetic's penalty, so he's the one that kind of holds up the play to play Jovetic in and then you know Jovetic dinks the ball and, and wins the penalty. So I think it was nice to see him more involved overall today. I think he had like close to 60 touches. Um but but again like is not like when you hit when we heard about this player some years ago well, well year and a half ago we um you know I think the fans are really expecting so much. And I think part of the disappointment is just that, you know, where he's been underwhelming. I think he's been underwhelming yeah. for fans. No, it, it, you're right. And he has been, I mean, I'm not going to gloss over that fact, you know, with, with the context that we gave and say that I'm happy. I'm not, I I, I don't think he's playing well either. I, I'm with you there a hundred percent. It's a shame. Um, it, it really is a shame because he is a he is a talented player and he and he is a high IQ player. It's it's just a shame to see him not um, not really settling in, not really settling in. Uh, here's a player we haven't really talked about, Alexandropoulos. Good point. And this is an interesting question from um, Yorgos Mutsanos. What have you made of Alexandropoulos so far? In my opinion, apart from the goal, he hasn't lived up to the hype as of yet. My my first part about that is well, what hype? Aside from the fact that he's Greek and he was at Panathinaikos, like what what hype? Um, beside the fact that he can carry, he he could carry the ball forward. That he could do, but that was an issue with some coaches because he carried the ball too much, um, even even when he was in Portugal. I knew from the beginning that was never going to be allowed for a second in this system. Diego Martinez does not want players like that. That's why players like Dabo, outside of his disciplinary issues, were not brought in. Fadiga, not brought in. Another type of mid, another midfielder that likes to carry the ball forward deeper from the deeper spot in midfield, and he's not um, he's not afforded that opportunity. But he did a lot of he covers a lot of ground, man. I thought I was I was happy with the performance in that I thought Alexandropoulos was covering a lot of ground, especially doing some work defensively. But I didn't necessarily believe he was coming in here and going to be like Madi, for example. Like I don't see that value potential in Alexandropoulos, at least yet. But I, I didn't have take too much of an issue with his performance. And I'm not sure what my expect or what the expectations were of him. Were were people expecting Mari Mari Camara 2.0? I, I'm not really sure. But I'm I'm I this is what I expected from Alexandropoulos, to be honest. This is kind of what I expected in this system. I don't think I have much to add to that, mate. I think you hit the nail on the head, really, in a sense. Uh, you know, the, the first question is what hype? Why? Because former Banathanagos player, Greek. I, you know, obviously, I think he he obviously scored that important goal against Genk, and that's right. fantastic. That's fantastic, and 
you know him and him and Retsos were so important in getting us over the line in those two games um but I, th I still think there's a lot of work and I think there's a reason why he's a bit further down the pecking order why we haven't seen a lot of him I don't know if he was injured uh, because he wasn't in the squad if I'm not mistaken uh, the last league game and he didn't play against Freiburg so I don't know if he's had a niggly injury or something um but as far as I'm concerned, there are certain things I know that Alexandropoulos can do very well um, in terms of his ability to press the ball, which is something that's appreciated by by the manager. He's yeah. he's a young guy. He's fit. He's mobile. I think there's there's a lot of room for improvement, and hopefully, hopefully Martinez can can help him make that that step up. Because I think you're right. I think we. We saw, I think it was against Atromitos, he came on in a league game and he, you know, he was playing in front of in front of the defenders and he was trying to play the ball out and he got caught in possession twice. And that's not something that this manager really looks uh, kindly upon. So he's young, he's got things to work on, he's got some good traits. He needs to improve. He needs to put his head down and work and um, and he can become something. Right. Yeah, like the if we're talking about what his role was today, his he was a partner to Madi, right? So if Madi is you know the more the, the 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 real key player in that midfield, right? The the distributor, the eight that's actually doing assisting. If Alexa Dropoulos is filling in for the Heze role, you're expecting him to to do exactly what you said to press the ball, be a ball winner. Um, okay, maybe he didn't win quite as many balls as you would have liked, or maybe he's not as smart in anticipating the opponent's move like SA is. But when he had the ball, what he did he do wrong that. with it? Yeah, he, 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 he doesn't he, have that. But like when he had the ball at his feet, right? Like if we're judging him on what he did as a six, when he got the ball, did he? I remember him maybe losing it once. No, I think when he when he got the ball, like he won some fouls, like he drove the ball yeah. forward. He was fairly accurate in his distribution. I don't remember seeing him like misplace a bad pass and put us in a difficult Ooh. position. Um, but 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 you're right. It's like you're trying to figure out. Okay, where does this player really fit on the pitch? Like he's not a six because he can't read the game very well yet. I I, I think uh, I think people confuse sometimes his ability to press really well. Uh, his aggression with like th those are characteristics that you that you value in a defensive midfielder but he can't read the game like he's not i think he's still quite raw in that sense gostop i know we were going to do man of the match but I i'm looking at this comment and i'm i'm actually i'm, I'm like um it's from red or dead ortega also looks mediocre at least since this is his first season in europe oh wait but so far nothing special we could have kept the kid that left oleg <laughs> i'm so um i i, I want to take the i'm taking the question seriously um so if we're comparing what ortega does to what oleg did right effort effort wise no one's going to knock on Oleg's effort because the effort's there. But what Ortega also does on the field is – I saw nothing but a guy that left everything on the pitch today. And if you want if you want an idea what, what Ortega does that Oleg doesn't – so the concern with Ortega was, for us, is he going to be able to do the defensive things because he does much more offensively. The number of overlaps Ortega had today – I only got a chance to go back about 12 games, but the number of overlaps Ortega had today, that's more overlaps than Oleg had in his last 12 games at Olympiacos. I want to put that in perspective. Ortega had more overlaps today in one game than Oleg had in his last 12 games for Olympiacos. That's crazy. It's crazy. So, and then the, or, or, Ortega won, he got into so many little spats. He's aggressive. Take, doesn't take doesn't take any crap from anybody. Uh, Sofa score said he had won eight eight ground duels today, out of almost twelve. It was like eleven or twelve. That's pretty good. And old and Oleg's defensive ability 
is exactly what people that like that was his positive. So you have a guy here now that that did on average what Oleg would give you defensively, but now he overlaps more. He can take players on. He does great stuff offensively. I'm sorry, I can't necessarily agree. I think Ortega's average. I think Ortega's a breath of fresh air, um, and offensively is something we've missed on that left side since Simikas was here. But that's that's just my opinion. I still think he's a he's adapting. He needs he needs some yeah. time. Um, I said it against Freiburg. I thought he was a little bit uh, timid in the first half, in particular. But then he started to come out of his shell more in the second half before he had that injury where the Freiburg player like fell on his leg. That could have been horrible. Uh, but you know, great cross today for the goal and. Even towards the end of the game, like coming to 90 minutes, you saw him outside the opponent's penalty area on the left-hand side, taking on defenders, uh, getting crosses into the box, uh, won a couple of corners. Yeah, and then there's more comments coming in. He can't pass or dribble. But, yeah, I mean, guys, he these players, they've been, they've been training with the team not even a week if you consider international break, like I'll tell you what, there are some moments like during today's game where he's tried to play a one, two or yeah. um, the, the, the team, they try to play triangles on the left-hand side. And he's, you see him, he's a step behind the move. It's because he doesn't know yet. He doesn't know that that's the pass. It's this, that takes time. That takes yeah. time. When you bring somebody from the other side of, that, of, of the Atlantic to come and play in Europe, when you bring someone from an, from another team into your team, it takes time. Uh, and I know, I know it's, I know everyone's impatient. Everyone's impatient. But how bad? Okay, but he can't pass, can't dribble. How bad can it be? Eighty five percent possession today, and he had he he had uh, what was his touch count? Uh, like I, I, I understand 73 touches on the ball, 45 of 53 passes completed. So he misplaced eight balls. He got the guy can't, the guy can't dribble, can't pass. He dribbled past the two people. I watched him dribble past. I didn't see any other attempts in that. No, I, I think, I think we're, we're just like, we're expecting uh, far, far too much, but not far maybe, too much, maybe far, that's it. I far too quickly, far too quickly. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. I I don't know. I I didn't see him as average. I thought he had a pretty good game, all things considered. Just got don't assist, be impatient. You know. That's like the one thing I'll say to fans is just don't be impatient with these players. Give it. Yeah, we have to give it some time. There's the game we had today. There's the Aris game. There's the game against yeah. Bas. The game against Batskatopola. These next few games good for us to build momentum before the game in Serbia. It's going to be a tough game when we go over there, but it's a game that we have to win. We have to win if we're serious about qualifying for the, or, you know, playing in Europe right. in 2024, January, February, whether it's right. conference, whether it's Europa, that's a game we have to win. Exactly. And let, 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 let's give it some time, guys. Okay. Like there, sure. there are some good things that we've seen from, from these players i think it's 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 overly harsh to to say right now that you know x is shit y is rubbish z i'm not naming names yeah we've talked about certain players today but just like give it some time and draw conclusions later on that note costa we're we're here for an hour uh it's about that time we get moving to man of the match coaches grade um and then we can uh, close close this thing out. So, do you want to get us started, man of the match, coaches grade? I wonder if you have the same one as me today. So, yeah, I know that I know what your criteria are for man of the match. <laughs> <laughs> so, I have a feeling. I have a feeling uh, who yours is going to be. I, I want to give a shout out to El Carby for his penalty because I think he was cool as a cucumber. Uh, of course. Uh, uh, Penenka is always a ballsy move. I, I was curious to see what he was going to do, actually, because like he's come under criticism for his finishing ability in front of goal. We all know, like I, I call him the fox in the box. 
Uh, he sniffs out the goals and, you know, he just puts his foot in and the ball hits the back of the net somehow. Um, I mean, the, the goal is against Freiburg. Mate, he's just there. He's in the right place yeah. at the right time. It doesn't matter if it's with his his uh, his big toe or, like, his shin. Like, the ball just ends up in the back of the net because he knows how to get into those positions at the right time. Um so, so that finish today, like, I was like, what's he going to do? He's going to go bottom corners, trying to smash it. And he's gone for the Penenka. So some, some people have put some comments in about El Kabi, and I just wanted to give him a shout out. Um, my man of the match, oh, it's a hard one, but I have to go with Retos today. I have to go with Retos today because I think he put in a captain's performance. And I really appreciated that from him, like to bounce, just to bounce back from all the shit. That he that he endured the last few days after the Freiburg game, and I'm giving it to him purely and simply because, like, I um, you know I I, I want to show respect and appreciation, and I think he I think he he deserves recognition, like such a young lad to to be captaining this side with with confidence and um, you know his contribution in getting the team forward. I think it's really like you know you always talk about. Man of the match is the guy that um, puts us in the best position to win, and that's Pedense today. Yeah, with with the uh, with the goal and the assist. But I just love what he can offer us in terms of bringing the ball out of defence. And when he's not on the pitch, like we're a different team. Whether some people choose to accept it or not, whether some people want to laugh at me or not, I don't give a shit. Uh, Coach's grades. Um, I think he did. I think he did well today, setting up the team in a in a way that struck a good balance between integrating new players and keeping keeping some um, keep, keeping some shape. Even though we we did get exposed um, at the beginning of the game, uh, then in terms of the subs, I mean, you know, it's a game we've won four 0 So what can you say, really? It's like an A, isn't it? Yeah. What What, what are you going to give a guy that wins four nothing? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I see. We're, 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 I saw. I saw Lockie's Gavalas is great. I was waiting for it. He gave him a C. Oh, <laughs> a C. <laughs> for nothing. Where are you gonna see? Can you imagine? Whew, God, I would love to see. Did he, actually, who... did he actually agree with me on Red Sox as man of the match? Wow! Oh my goodness, look at that. Look at or, that. or is he or is he or is he heckling me because I picked the hits? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But while we're figuring that out, uh Jesus Moraitis, thank you so much for the donation, man. Uh keep up the good work, guys. Could work, guys, is the comment. Sorry for screwing that up, buddy. Uh thank you so much, guys. As you know, donations are going towards leveling up the show. We don't keep anything. We're using this to make everything better. Fun stuff is coming. We do have merch on its way. Um some details I'm finalizing with that and we'll have something uh, for you guys to see. So we're really excited about that. And a lot of fun stuff is getting started, but uh Kosa, you already, you already called my man of the match. <laughs> you knew who it was. Uh, I, I, I gave it to, to Podenz. I thought he had a great game today, um, a goal. And then of course he draws the penalty. Um, he also had a couple of nice balls. Uh, I, I just thought overall he had a, he had a solid game today. And it was something we we were talking about where, or we've been talking about how like where is our threat, our offensive threat coming from, if Fortunis is not on the pitch. Well, Fortunis wasn't on the pitch. We saw stuff we liked from Sobakin, and we got some great product end product from Daniel Poden. So I was very happy about that. And coach's grade, you know, again early on, you know, there were some very scary moments, very scary counters. Um, mainly bec because of certain people over committing certain players over committing. That's something that maybe we need to adjust for, but I don't always put some of those individual errors on the coach. If, if the setup itself is sound, you don't see those necessarily impact you as much. Although of course it can be a product of the system as well, but when you win for nothing, I can't, I can't not give him an A unless we're nitpicking certain subs and certain players we wanted to see in the end, I, I still give him an A. Four nothing win, and my man of the match is Podense. No, you know, uh, with a with a nice shout. Of course, I I think it's very fair, very fair to give a shout to to Retos because he had a great game. Plus, his ball led to the opening goal. His ball broke that deadlock when Kifisia was being dangerous, and 
he played it and he's the one that played the ball for the Podence penalty draw. So I think it's a fair shot. Um, we all put, in all, we, happy with him. We put a, we put a vote on our on our Twitter page this time after the game. I don't know if we put one on YouTube today. But oh, I didn't do a one. poll. No. Yeah, so that one on, on Twitter, close to 200 people have voted. Derezos, 14%. Podenza, 63%. Sol Bakken, 20%. 3% other. So it looks pretty Podence. pretty overwhelming there. Podence. He's getting the graphic tomorrow, I guess. <laughs> anyway. Well, Gustav, there's nothing else about that time. You got anything else you want to tell everybody before we close up? No. Thank you. I think uh, time to wrap it up. Well, thank you, everybody, for listening, especially those of you that made it this far. This is Gate 7 International by the fans for the fans. Always fun to end the night with talking about a huge win. There's more games coming up. We have Adis uh, during the week. We also have uh, Panathinaikos Ike is going to be tomorrow, so that could have some implications for the table. We'll see how that goes. And uh, until next time, guys, we'll see you, and hopefully we can get a post-match going for the game the midweek game. Nice. Hope everybody has a great rest of your Sunday and we'll chat with you during the week. Go!